So while creating virtual machine, we get option to provision the hard disk, thick and thin. We'll see if you select thick, what will happen? If you select thin, what will happen? Important for day-to-day -day work and also interview point of view. Let's say we have allocated, uh, allocated 100 GB C drive. Let's say 30 GB is used and free is 70 GB from this virtual machine. That means there will be one VMDK for 100 GB capacity. Let's say data store size is 1000 GB. So the data store capacity is 1000 GB. We have created a virtual machine with 100 GB. Okay, so it it will occupy 100 GB space from this 1000 GB hard disk space. Okay, partition 1000 GB hard disk partition data store, which is called data store. Now, while allocating this, while creating or while allocating this hard disk, we get option to select thick versus thin. If you select thick, what will happen? Uh, it's called reserved disk space. That means disk space will be committed at the time of allocation itself. That means when you create this virtual machine itself, 100 GB will be consumed, okay, occupied. 100 GB will be occupied from this 1000 GB. So if you look at the data store free space, now you will feel that. 1000 minus 100, 100 is already utilized. So you will see only 900 GB free from this data store. 100 GB VMDK hard disk is created. Now, actually used, if you see overall 1000 GB partition, actual data is only 30 GB. That's what the data we have used from the virtual machine. Actually used 30 GB only, but if you look at data store, we will feel that 900, oh, sorry, 100 GB is used. 900 GB only free. Okay, that means the disk space is reserved for that machine, whether it used or doesn't use doesn't matter for us. Okay, it will be committed. It's a very easy example. Every time I'm giving the same basic example, it's like uh, your mobile direct, right? You are in a one minute charge. Let's say you are in a plan. One minute they are charging one rupees for you. One minute means sixty seconds. Sixty seconds they will, the vendor will charge one rupee for you. If you make a call, once the call is connected, that 60 seconds is reserved for you. Whether you use 60 seconds or you use 10 seconds, doesn't matter for the ATL or Vodafone. They'll charge one rupee. Even if you speak for five seconds, they charge one rupee. That means that 60 seconds is reserved for you, right? The same way here also. 100 GB is reserved for that machine. It uses 30 GB, actually you use 30 GB. But if you look at the data store, we feel that 100 GB is used, utilized. Okay. So that is thick provision disk. When you allocate thick provision, that much space will be occupied. Even though simply if you create 900 GB disk space, even though you are using only 30 GB space here, actual data, it's unnecessary you are blocking 900 GB, right? Like printers and all will never use beyond 40, 50 GB. Printer machines and all. Okay. So, unnecessarily it will be occupying the data but normally it is preferred okay. and if you see another disk method thin it's uh, basically called on demand usage okay. disk space will be committed when the guest OS use it or place any data.
So even in this thin, in the same virtual machine, if you allocate as a thin provision, 100 GB thin provision, in this virtual machine, actually used only 30 GB, right? Right? If you look at the data store free space, you will feel that 1000 minus 30, only 30 GB is used. Remaining, you will feel it as 970 GB is free. Even though you allocated 100 GB disk as a thin provision, you will feel that 970 GB is free. So on demand, based on guest OS level usage, the, the data store usage will increase. Okay. Clear? And it's like basically however you use that much. From the guest OS, it can use up to 100 GB. 0 to 100 GB it can use. Based on its usage, we'll look at the data store total capacity. So right now you have 1000 GB, you allocated 100 GB to this machine, but you will feel it as 970 GB is free. You create another virtual machine. You will, let's say you have given 500 GB disk space, but actually use maybe 50 GB. Right now total 500 plus 100, 600 GB you allocated, but overall usage is 50 plus 30 only. You can create another virtual machine. Let's say 700 GB. Actually used maybe 100 GB. Now overall if you see 700 plus 500 plus 100. Total 1300 GB you allocated. But actually used is 180 GB only. 30 plus 50 plus 100. Okay. Still you have 820 GB free. You can allocate some more. Even though you have 1000 GB. As of now itself, we have allocated 1300 GB and actually use this 180 GB. Available capacity is 1000 GB only. This is called over provisioning. When you create or when you provision thin provision disk, okay, we can do over provisioning. Even though we have 1000 GB hard disk, we can present as even 5500 GB also. There is a limit for over commitment, okay. but actual usage will be 1000 only. If you keep placing the data, you cannot place 13 GB, 1300 GB data here. right? Actual, we have container with 1000 GB capacity only. Maximum actual data you can place, maximum 1000 GB only. Even though you allocate as 1300 GB, you can place only 1000 GB. So it's a bit dangerous, but if you use it properly, this is preferred. Okay, if you maintain your threshold limits, if you get a warning, try to clear it quickly. So if you follow best practices, thin provisioning is preferred. Clear? It's called over provisioning. Even though you have 1000 GB, you are presenting it as a 1300 GB or 1500 GB, right? It's called over provisioning, but actual usage will be 1000. So that's the difference between thick disk and thin disk. Very, very common interview question. What are the disk types you can provision in VMware? Thick provision and thin provisioning. What is thick? It's a disk space will be committed at the time of allocation on. When you allocate itself, the disk space will be committed and consumed. Thin disk <coughs> on demand usage. It will disk space will be used based on guest OS usage. Clear? Any questions here? That's why in our lab, we have very uh, less data store space, right? On our ESXi, 280 GB only. That's why always I recommend you to use thin provisioning. Even though you are creating a virtual machine with 40 GB, you are not using inside the guest OS, but you will be allocating 40 GB space. Okay. If you see our ESXi machine, we have this capacity of 270 GB, 271. When you are creating, let's say right now itself 20 GB free space, right? I will create a virtual machine. Select this hard disk, 20 GB free, right? Right now. <coughs> so here, 20 total allocate, <coughs> maximum you allocate. 20 GB, right? 15 GB I'm allocating, but there is this provision. 
thick provision there are two modes again and inside the thick there will be lazy and eager we will discuss them so i am selecting thick provisioning next and finish now inside this test virtual machine i have not placed any data just a well vm is created not even os is installed that means i am not even using 1 mb or 1 gb of data if you look at data store see 15 gb is used from this data store but i didn't place any data inside the virtual machine because the disk space is thick provision if you go to edit settings expand the hard disk thick provision that's why it is occupying 15 gb now itself clear i'll delete this one now 20 gb free i'll create the same virtual machine with thin provision expand the hard disk thin provision virtual machine is created you refresh still you will feel it as 20 gb free because i did not place anything inside the virtual machine just a vm is created almost like 1 mb maximum for less than 4 mb of disk space only will be occupied that will not even change here 4 mb of <coughs> entire virtual machine as of now it's 4 mb only okay because nothing is placed inside the disk so you will feel still 20 gb is free That's why I recommend you to create thin provisioning virtual machines in our lab. Clear? So that's the difference between thick versus thin. Very very important for interview point of view. And now the immediate question they will ask. Thick and thin, every anybody can answer. Okay, as of now this word, our in, in their own words they can explain. But the main interview question will be thick to thin conversion or vice versa by mistake you you have allocated as a thin provisioning you need to convert into thick provisioning or thick to thin vice versa either way how to convert if you want to convert will there be any outage okay so there will be no outage because we use sv motion sv motion is live migration name itself storage v motion so it's a live migration of moving virtual machine files from one data store to another data store okay so select virtual machine right click on it migrate change storage change disk format either thick or thin if you want you can select any the only one select destination data store next so using sv motion itself we can convert the thick to thin and thin to thick so it's a live migration as we motion is a live migration when the vm is running itself we can do that conversion okay any question as of now so but you are changing the this disk format from one data store to another data store right so while changing the disk format thing to thick we have to change the data store also you are, if you just think why i'm just changing the disk format only why i have to move one data store to another data store if you place in the same data store the disk format will not change 
okay you want to just format the chain, uh, disk type thick to thin thin to thick so why should i change my data store let's keep it in the same but change the format so if you select the source and destination as same data store it will not change you must put it on a different data store fine yeah so we'll see if we have two data stores we have only one data store we'll ask them to click it will ask them to create a data store take five minutes meanwhile we'll discuss about thin uh, eager zero versus lazy zero So we know that the data in the disk will be formatted in the form of ones and zeros. The file uh, blocks will be created and it will be like this. So we know that the data will on the disk will be placed in the form of ones and zeros, right? So this we make it as eager zero. This is lazy zero. Eager zero, lazy zero. Inside the thick, there will be again there will be interview question. What is thick versus sorry? What is eager versus lazy also? So we know that data will be formed in the form of ones and zeros on a particular hard disk. When you say eager zero, okay, you are trying to format with the eager zero. That means all should be zeros. Format means all should be zeros. Now everything should be cleaned up. So when you say eager zero, if there is one, it will it should be zero, right? All the blacks should be replaced with zero formatting. There is one, so it will place zero, and there is zero already in the block but still it will place zero because it's we have instructed this disk to place zeros in all the blocks okay format means all zeros should be there when you select eager zero it will place zero here also and here also here even if zero it will place a zero All are zeros now. All the blocks are being formatted with zeros. This is eager zero. Then lazy zero. The name itself lazy, right? It is lazy to work. So first it will see there is one. It will place zero. There is zero. Why should I place zero again? Skip it. It's lazy to work, right? Skip it. Only one. It will place zero. Zero. Skip. 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 Zero, skip, and zero. Now, if you see, this disk is also formatted. This disk is also formatted, but there is a difference in formation. Okay, while formatting the disk, there is a change. Here, all the blocks will be cleared. Only here, the blocks with ones only will be cleared. That's the difference between lazy versus eager. And most of the cases it will be lazy zeroed only if there is any specific requirement from application if application works only with eager zero then we do eager zero format okay some applications like ft fault tolerance will need a disk with eager zero format okay. at that time we will create eager zero disks and not only that few applications third party applications I need eager zero. We will allocate the provision eager zero disk. By mistake, if you have created lazy zero disk and you want to convert into eager zero, 
again using the same sv motion you can do it okay while migrating change from instead of thick to thin just select it eager to lazy within the thick itself select eager to lazy clear so it will be done we'll see if the data yeah there are two data stores now we can i'll just create a virtual machine i'll select in this 20 gb so initially i'll create a disk with the thick provision lazy zero by default this will be the option let it be the same now the vm is created test vm 09 if you see edit settings hard disk it is thick provision lazy zero here you cannot change even if the vm is in power up mode you cannot change the type so to change the type right click migrate change storage only same like as we motion here. So here if you select, it will be applicable for all the hard disks of that virtual machine. If there are multiple hard disks, three, four VMDK files to that virtual machine, it will apply to all the disks. If you want to select only one virtual machine, sorry, one file, click on per disk. But right now this VM has only one disk, right? Here you can check. Click on per disk here. Select the hard disk here, disk format, configure, Here you can change so thin to thick as it was thick lazy zero right i am selecting thin if i select thick easier zero it will be changed from lazy to eager okay if i want select thin i am select this hard disk only will be changed to thin provisioning but if i keep in the same data store thin provisioning in the same data store i am selecting i am not changing the location select a valid data store earlier it it was not giving this option. Now at least the, it is from 7.0 onwards, it is giving this option. Means you are not changing the location, right? That's why it is giving an error. Select thin provisioning, destination data store, next. Confirm, next. Source and destination. Source is data store one, destination is seven. Now, if you go to edit settings, expand the hard disk, you can see thin provisioning. It is changed from thick to thin, but when the VM is running itself, you can do this. And thin to thick, either way, this is the same option, thick to thin, thin to thick, but thin to thick, there is another option also. But it need a downtime. Okay. Browse data store. Select VMDK. Click on Inflake. So this works only from thin to thick, but VM should be powered off state. So VM powered up, browse the data store, select the VMDK file. Here is the file, right? Click on inflate here. Right now it is thin provisioning. We have just checked. Test 09, edit settings, thin provision.
So select this hard disk, click on inflate. It will be changed from thin to thick, but VM should be powered up. But we can do without powering off itself using SV motion. So second option, this is just second option. Fine. If you don't want to change from one data store to another data store, and if it is only thin to thick, this option is applicable. But day to day job, it will not be a regular work. Once in a while only we get it. Okay. So just important for interview point out. Any questions from thick to thin now? Clear? Take some time to inflate. What is DRS? <coughs> Scheduler. So what it does? What DRS will do? Right. So to make the load balance across the cluster, across the ESXi host, so here on the cluster we enable SDR, uh, so DRS. It will automatically vMotion VMs. DRS will automatically vMotion VMs from one host to another host if there is high utilization. If high RAM or CPU usage on the host, it will automatically vMotion here and there. If you don't V motion, there may be a performance issues. To avoid performance issues, it will V motion here and there. Okay. Same thing. If what if you don't SV motion? If the data store is crossing threshold limit, you are not SV motioning the files. You have to SV motion manually to clear the data store usage. But you are not taking action. You are not taking an action. So what will happen? The VM will go to hung state, whichever is running on this data store. If it is full, it will go to hung state. To avoid that, here we will create data store cluster. <coughs> Using these data stores, we will create a cluster called SDRS, storage DL. Same like here, how vMotion is automated. Here, SV motion will be automated. So, if a data store crosses threshold limit, another data store. If any of the data show cross more than threshold limit that we set, a 70% usage or 80% usage, it will automatically SV motion from highly utilized data store to the less utilized data store. You no need to do manually any SV motion. It takes care of the load balancing in the data stores. Clear? So we'll create SDRS cluster and move the data store. Important for interview point of view, day to day job, there'll be no regular things on this SDRS. So in the vCenter, go to storage view, data center, 
right click on it storage create strs create data store cluster enter a name select threshold limit click on ok we can select data stores also if you want to add or remove data stores add or remove data stores from the SDRS just drag and drop will work that's why you should be careful when you are working with touch pads on this peer platform so go to data storage view this is host view vms and clusters this is storage view so go to storage view in the data center right now these are individually created data stores okay right click on the data store data center storage new data store cluster name i'll just name it as sdrs let's say 01 turn on this feature sdrs feature we are enabling it fully automation or no automation in drs how many automation levels are there how many automation levels in drs hmm? two or three three automation levels. in sdrs there are two automation levels one is no automation or fully automation next thing these things we will control here next place here okay. based on data store usage if the data store is more more than 80 percent utilized 80 percent of its capacity is used do a sv motion or you can say if the minimum free space is less than 5 gb Move, as we move the VMs from that data store to another data store. But 90% cases in real time, we prefer percentage. 80% of the data store will keep it. If you want to change any value, like 75% also you can put. But normal, nobody will use 75%. Okay, like this. You can set 80% or whatever the value that you want, you can set. If any data store, Cross more than 80% usage, it will automatically SV motion from that data store to another data store. Or latency. Okay, that means you created a data store here. This virtual machine is running in this hard disk partition. Okay, here. Let's say this these are two critical servers which are placed in this data store, and its usage is less than 80% only but more read and write operations are going to the same data store because their critical functionality high workload is going on so that means too many read and writes will be going from here to here data write means placing a new data from this virtual machine to its hard disk hard disk is located in this partition so too many instructions are going incoming uh, io interactions input and output transactions are going here even though if it is 80 percent utilized but more read and writes are going here there will be delay because that path is completely busy continuous read and writes are going and there will be delay in resource uh, instruction execution there will be delay in read and writes to that hard disks of that virtual machine because too much traffic is flowing here that is called io latency okay that's where you see based on io latency or based on data store usage based on io latency here or based on usage you can select any one value okay but preferred value is 15 milliseconds if a 15 millis if the instruction is taking more than 15 milliseconds to execute it here that means something is wrong it is too delayed 15 milliseconds is too much high to execute the instruction here. So heavy load is going to the same data store. That's why SDRS will move some of the disk to another data store. 
and now the instructions will execute in less than 15 milliseconds so there will be no delay if there is delay we will find slowness in the application okay, you are accessing your whatsapp facebook some application but there are delay okay, something like this one also teach me i'm i am just discussing something beyond which you let's say uh, right now it's 8 40 we are discussing about sdrs now you will be getting information about what we have discussed 15, 10 minutes before okay so like uh, thick and thin this that's not fair right it's not live there is a delay in the execution okay so to avoid that the latency should be less than 15 milliseconds fine another example let's say you are doing a banking transaction there is a delay in 15 milliseconds your transaction is timed out you're trying to send some 10000 transaction uh, transaction is timed out okay but there was a delay in the execution let's say one or two zeros are missed from the transaction and we know what will happen right that's why the uh, io latency should not be greater than 15 milliseconds if there is 15 milliseconds that's something wrong so there is a delay in the execution and it will try to move that one of the virtual machine disk to another data store and there will be resource instruction execution will be quick okay. based on data store usage or based on latency yes. if you want to select select the cluster now and select which two data stores you want to make part of it finish it will create a data store cluster now here you can see data store cluster it's like three data stores are merged together same like how you see cluster three hosts are merged together like here and you can see sdrs three data stores merge it together and these two are part of this sdrs cluster if you want to if you create a new data store now if you want to add into the same data store hold with left click drag and leave it now it is part of this data store cluster now three data stores are added inside this sdrs cluster if you want to bring it out again hold with left click drag and leave it on the data center it will come out of the sdrs list now only two data stores are part of this drag and drop will work that's why when you are working with touchpad you should be very careful so it might be it is holded like this and but sometimes it may drag and drop when you're just moving the cursor it may drag and drop okay unnecessary headache fine any questions from sdrs and once you create we will not have any work to do with uh, sdrs cluster until when you create new data store again you may need to add into data store cluster just drag and drop will work any questions So here, so here, eighty percent of this capacity, capacity is let's say hundred GB. Eighty percent of this data store, remember that means up to eighty GB. It can use after eighty GB, it uses automatically some data from this data store will be going to another data store, which is part of this SD, uh, SDRS cluster. Yeah. Which is uh, the small page, small topic. See enhanced linker mode. Okay. 
So you are the administrator here with your laptop. VMware administrator is here. There are multiple vCenters for your client. There are multiple V centers for your client. So now, if you, as an administrator, if you connect to this V center, you can manage the objects from this V center only. Host and VMs from this V center only you can manage. If you want to do something on the second V center, you need to connect to this V center again. If you want to do something here, like there are customers with hundred V centers also. Okay, V center section, hundred to two hundred also there. It will be too much like we need to log into the every v center again and again okay with the same username and password that's why vmware has a feature called linked mode earlier it was linked mode from 6.0 onwards it is changed to enhanced linked mode so we can logically group the v center or connect together logically connect to connect them logically together like this there are some limitations are requirements we have to satisfy let's say you satisfied all the requirements of this el enhanced linked mode phr and they are connected together if you log into one v center you can see all other v centers also which are part of that linked mode that means if you log into one v center you can see total three v centers now right now and all the vms and host you can manage from one v center itself if you log in here there will be another v center under the same interface you can see if you want expand that we send that, that object and you can manage so that means from one session itself you can manage objects from multiple v centers understood just for vmware administrator ease of use this feature has been developed when there are multiple v centers we can manage objects from multiple v centers from the one in one session itself one web page Clear? Yeah. But no other technical tasks possible. Let's say you have a template here in the vCenter 2. If you want to create a VM from this template to another vCenter, it is not possible. If you want to SV motion from here to here, it's not possible. V motion from here to here. Only V motion is possible nowadays, but that also again has some requirements. Only V motion is possible from one V center to another V center. But there are a lot of requirements. Apart from V motion requirements, three or new requirements also are there. That's called cross V center V motion. Cross V center V motion only will work. No other technical task possible like VM from template clone as we motion we nothing will work. Completely like as yes, their separate V center just helps VMware administrators to manage to see them from one interface. Just it will be visible for us from the one interface. Ikkadoka V center, then Kinnam Goka V center, let this plan Just expand that object and manage. Just for VMware administrator, we can see them all in this page itself. Except that technically there is no benefit. Okay, to configure that, there are some requirements like.
min right five minutes time difference enterprise plus license that means you need to have top license expensive vc 6.0 or later versions if you have old v center 5.5 and all we cannot attach like this requirements are there you need to have top level license enterprise plus which is expensive if you want to use linked mode okay so we all v center should be 6.0 or higher versions if you have 5.5 v center and bring it to 6.0 linked mode it's not possible admin on the time difference let's say time on this v center is uk time time on this server is india time it's not possible to link okay you need to configure one common ntp so in every object we can use one ntp server let's say there will be one of the virtual machine here and windows team or a separate team will configure as ntp network time protocol so we will inspect this v center get time from this machine and we will inspect this v center also get time from this machine this v center also this host also this host also it's possible in this case at least v center every object is possible to get a time from particular one server so now whatever the time that you have set in this machine as per your company standard business requirement let's say it is set to let's say uk based client you set it to uk time now all the v center will get the uk time if you log into this v center and the c time it will show uk whatever the time right now in uk it will show that time this v center also the same time so now all the servers will have the same time so fine it works with enhanced linked mode okay. time server we will configure time server that will see how to configure it and that and admin rights to configure into linked mode you need to have permission also let's say you don't have permission on this v center you cannot add this v center to linked mode fine yeah any questions from remote about linked mode and the configuration only you can do at the time of installation or at the time of upgrade if you need okay if you want to configure linked mode if you don't have question i have one question for you meanwhile if anyone has question please confirm i'm giving just one more minute time from this enhanced linked mode if it is clear for you i'll ask one question clear okay question is it's all these three v centers are connected together in one linked mode now i have a permission on this v center I have permission to log into this V center and this V center, whatever it may be, less permission or full permission. I have permission to log into these two V centers. Okay. But three V centers are connected in linked mode. Now, if I log into this V center, can I see all three? Or can I see all three, or can I see only two, or can I see only one? One, two, or three? Just type your answer in the chat. I have permission on vCenter 1 and vCenter 2 and vCenter 3 I don't have permission and they, all these three are connected in linked mode. If I log into vCenter 1, can I see all the three vCenters or these two or it's one? One, two or three. How many vCenters can I see now? Very simple question. Others also, please try to respond. From here, two or three? Two. 
okay two is the correct answer we see one and two only we can see three is wrong i don't have permission on this third we center that means for a reason i don't have permission i'm not supposed to log into the third we center that's why they did not given me any permission if i log into this we center linked which is connected in linked mode if it is visible to me then what where is the security they did not give me any permission for a reason i'm not supposed to do log in and i'm not supposed to do anything here if it is visible to me that's something wrong right it's not secure so wherever whichever we center we don't have permission it will not be visible whichever permission whichever we center i have permission that only i can see okay just for your understanding any confusion even if it is linked mode it will not just yes, you don't have permission yeah they were logically connected but you don't have permission so that means for a reason you don't have permission so enhanced linked mode should not allow you to log in or see that if whoever has permission that only they can see and maximum 15 v centers only you can configure maximum 15 v centers only we can connect in one link or two one enhanced link if you are more than that create another enhanced link more clear just interview point of view in day to day job If you log into V Center, other V Centers also will be visible. So don't surprise; it will be linked. Okay. 